Yo, what up? Hello. How are you guys doing? Great. 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 Did you have enough coffee? Yes. Good. I hope you're awake. I hope you have your helmets on, your seatbelts strapped in. I've got like 60 something slides to share with you guys, and I know you're like, oh, 60 slides. Uh, I'm going to try to make it fun, but put on your seatbelts because we're going to go fast. I've been told I only have 18 minutes. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Nyan. And I'm going to talk to you guys today about two things. I'm going to talk about the human psyche, what happens in our head as we develop as human beings, and I'm also going to talk to you guys a little bit about the environment and some of the things that are close to my heart. So I'll start with this. A long time ago in a country far, far away, <laughs> there was this. <laughs> yes, that is me. So after university and during university, I was what you would call a hippie tree hugger. Yeah. I did a lot of stuff with the environment. I loved this type of work. I loved hiking and camping, all of that sort of stuff. So I really liked the environment. Uh, in college, I did a lot of stuff in clubs and that sort of thing. I came to Vietnam in 2002. I carried that part of my experience with me here. So since I've been in Vietnam, I've done a number of different environmental things and organizations, whether I started them or worked with them. Currently, I'm doing Vietnam Sat Tha San. I'm a co-founder, and we focus primarily on minimizing waste and fixing this littering behavior. So that's what we do. Anyhow, today, I'm gonna to talk about the human psyche, the id, the ego, and the superego. Have you guys heard of this? Some of you may have, it's not very popular. It was something, it was a theory that this guy came up with. Now you may have heard of Sigmund Freud. If you haven't, he's an Austrian neuro, no, neuroscientist. And he came up with the whole school, the whole area of study called psychoanalysis. His theory was that our psyche is made up of three parts that, that sort of work together. The id, the ego, and the superego. Now I'll explain each, to, each of those to you guys very quickly. <clears throat> the id, by the way, that is my son. Very, very cute. Okay. The id is our primal basic instinct. When we are born, we have the id. When a baby is hungry, what does he do? He cries. Me, 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 me. Give me some milk, mom. Right? And it's very important that we have this id. Okay, it's important to our survival those first couple of years, right? But can you take a baby into a library and expect it to be quiet? No, because no, it doesn't understand that. It's all about me, me, me. Now guys, to be clear, the id follows us through adulthood too, because I know you guys all know somebody who's me, 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 and they're like 50 years old, right? The ego. Now this is my son also. He's getting cuter and bigger, okay? The ego, it happens sort of when we're three or four or five, six, it happens all around in there. What we start to realize, we exist in a world with other people, other beings. We interact with this world, okay? At this point, you can take the baby into a library and say, hey, or you take a kid in the library and say, hey, okay, you gotta be quiet, it's a library. This is how things work in the library. Got it? Got it? Thank you. Finally, the superego. Now this is where it gets a little bit more uh, uh, a little bit more complicated. The superego is that part of us. It's our conscience. If you ever see the, the, the cartoon with the devil on one side and an angel on one side, it's the angel. It's the one telling us, hey, you know what? You shouldn't do that because that's against the cultural rules. That's not socially acceptable behavior. Our superego is how we behave and how we impact the world around us. Socially acceptable behavior, things that our parents and our teachers teach us. Everybody cool? By the way, that's my son. He's grown up really fast, hasn't he? Okay, he's, he's now 15, and in fact, this picture, I learned how to do some Photoshop. This picture came from that picture. Okay? <laughs> This is me trying to influence my son's super ego. I took my son out and a bunch of friends. We rented a boat. We went out on the river in Saigon. We started in District 1. We took the river down, the boat down 
to District 7, and we found a problem. Now, you guys know the problem, too. Here's the problem. Do you recognize those buildings? Those buildings are right near us. Wait, hold on. Wait for it. There's another one. And here's another one. This is right next to our university. Our campus is to the left of the screen. Okay. So we know the problem. We know the statistics. All right, now this is a seatbelt time. Hold on, guys. We're going to go fast here. 8 to 12 million tons of plastic in our oceans today. Truckload of plastic goes into the oceans every 60 seconds. So think about this, guys. Every minute, one of these is going to the ocean. A straw used for just a few minutes exists for 400 to 500 years. By 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Wow. Vietnam currently is ranked number four in the world for polluting the oceans. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the size of four Vietnams. Now, I'm not the explain the, the Great Pacific Park garbage patch, because I think some of you may know, some of you may not. So here, real quick explanation. On our planet, there are five areas where garbage just collects in the middle of the oceans. The largest one is known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So right here, between North America and Asia, there's a big swirling mass of garbage floating in the ocean. And that's what we call the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Now, I want you to think with me for one second. Imagine with me. You have one Vietnam, two Vietnams, three Vietnams, four Vietnams of trash on land. Four Vietnams of trash on land. How do you clean it up? Now, compound that with the fact that it is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Something to consider. We know the news. I'm only picking a tiny little segment of the news because I only have 18 minutes. Indonesia, whale washes up dead, a thousand pieces of plastic in its stomach. Philippines, whale washes up dead, 88 pounds of calcifying trash in its stomach. The Mediterranean, a pregnant whale, dead, trash in its stomach. This one's in North Carolina. This one actually made it. They saved this whale. They pulled plastic bags out of its throat so it could breathe again and released it. Interesting thing, this was on Fox News. Now, I don't know if you know Fox News. Fox News does not cover environment, but this was on Fox News. We know the news. So, after looking at all this news, I thought to myself, man, you know what, I work at RMIT. I have access to this lovely online database. Let's do some academic research. <clears throat> I started looking at scientific journals. I'm not talking the, the Wall Street Journal. I'm not talking the Washington Post, the LA Times, the Weekly or Tanim. These are academic journals. Scientists are going out and doing these studies. Now, to help me with this, I'm gonna introduce you to a friend of mine. This is Henry the Happy Fish. Let me ask you guys, how many of you guys like eating fish? Let me see hands, hands in the air. All right, about 75% of you guys are raising your hands. That's cool, I like eating fish too. Okay, that's Henry, the happy fish. Now this is Henry with the tummy ache. He's not feeling so hot, okay? First study I looked at was in the Netherlands. Okay, this is North Sea, pretty clean water. They tested about 1,200 fish. They're happy. 31 of them had plastic in them. Not happy, tummy ache. Still not bad though, 2.6%, not bad. All right, next study, Brazil, 32 tested, seven with plastic. Now we're talking 22%. So if you go out with five of your friends, everybody orders fish, one person in your group is going to eat a fish that has plastic in it. USA, those numbers are off, sorry, USA, but 25% of the fish in the USA. Now, interesting thing, going back to Ms. Two's talk, in the USA, they noticed that the fish were ingesting plastic fiber, which is different. They tested it against fish in Indonesia. Indonesia, harder microplastics from bottles, okay? That type of thing, versus fabric off the coast of California. Okay, Indonesia, 76 tested 21 with plastic, 28%. Now this is close to home, guys. Great Pacific Garbage Patch, 670 fish were tested, and 23 had, or I'm sorry, 235 had plastic. 35% of the fish had plastic in them. Now here's the scary bit. This year, 
Uh, some folks in the UK did a study. They went to the deepest part of the ocean, the Mariana Trench. We're talking 11 kilometers down. They gathered up a bunch of the creatures that lived down there, pulled them up. Every single one of them had plastic in their bellies. Okay, so we know now that it's in our food chain, guys. It's in our food chain. Another one, this one's out of Australia. They did, they, they, they surveyed, they looked at 50 different articles talking about ingesting plastic, and they estimate that the average human being ingests about five grams of plastic a week. That's a credit card. So if you have a credit card in your wallet, save everybody the time, take it out, cut it up, throw it in your mouth, swallow it. Scary, scary stuff. Now here's the really scary part. They don't know what it does to us yet. They're still trying to figure out what does plastic do to us. They have done some research to make say that, at least with the fish, which I've been looking at, that it does cause haptic stress, meaning it impacts the fish's liver, okay? Because the liver has to filter out the toxins from the plastic. But other than that, I haven't found anything that tells me what it means. By the way, where do you think we're ingesting the plastic from? Water. A lot of it's from the water that we drink, salt, and I have to say, one of the most depressing parts of the research is beer. Beer, <laughs> which is not one of my favorite drinks. <laughs> so what's the problem here, guys? Can you help me out? What's the problem? Plastic? Humans, thank you very much, very good. You remember what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the id. That's the problem, guys. It's behavior, it's human behavior. It's not the plastic, plastic is wonderful. Plastic does great things for us. It's about the human behavior. Look at these guys. This photo was taken right outside of our university here. These guys are out there fishing, having a good time. Have you ever noticed what's left behind when they go home? Plastic bags, rubbish, trash. Okay. It's human behavior. And here's the thing, it's not the poor that do it. Yeah, sure, I've seen people on bicycles throwing trash on the street, okay? But I've also seen people on motorbikes. Great story, okay? I pull up to a light next to me, family of three, a father, a mother, and a little baby in the middle. So I was like, ooh, little baby, ooh, cute baby. They drive off, I'm driving behind them, okay? About 30 seconds later, what comes flying back at me? A diaper. I am not lying. True story. A diaper. The woman was just like, Rip. and I was like, Rip. now here's the thing. This one really bothers me the most. I was behind a Q5 or a Q7, whichever the SUV was, driving along, and a milk carton comes out the window. Man, you got a car, dude. Leave it in the car. So you get somewhere. So it's not the social class, man. It's id. It's not being educated. Now, as Ms. T has mentioned before, there are a lot of movements going. We can educate people. So it's about the id. Now, I want to go back to Super Ego. That's my son. Yeah. He would absolutely hate it if I knew I showed you this picture. <laughs> I put this up here for one reason. Vietnamese people are clean people. I mean, we are, okay? Everybody in this room, if you're Vietnamese, you know what I'm about to say. When you learn to take a bath as a kid, your mom told you to... Yeah. What did you say that? Say that again? Gay. 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 Am I right? Yeah. Vietnamese people, you know that. Your mom's like, you gotta be clean. You have to gay. Get all the dirt out. <laughs> you follow? Vietnamese people are clean people. We're taught to be clean. So now what we do is we just step that up and elevate that understanding of cleanliness to ego level or super ego level. We exist in a world with other people, other beings. And if you throw trash on the street because it's convenient for you, that's the id. We're talking about ego and super ego. So I want to do one thing real quick. <laughs> When you guys be here today, I want you guys to do this, and I'm flashy thinking you. So after this, you're gonna go home and do exactly what I tell you to do. What I've got here is what I call my zero waste toolkit, and it's so easy. Most of you guys are students, right? Okay, you guys have backpacks, I have a backpack. Now, I carry this backpack with me, pretty much everywhere I go because of this. 
by that time, right? I'm sure you carry your backpack around with you. In my backpack, I have this, okay? Very rarely there are occasions when I will buy a bottle of water, but I have this. I can fill it up most places I go to. I can fill it with coffee, I can fill it with soft drink, I can fill it with water. Yeah. I can fill it with beer. Okay, what else do I have in here? I have this. Check it out. Now, this one's really fancy, but you can get other ones that aren't as fancy. These are utensils. So, can you see? Can you see? How cool is that? Now, you don't have to get a fancy one like this. I was given this, but it's nice, okay? So I don't use plastic utensils anymore. Wait for it, and then this! The straw, this didn't talk about it. The straw, so these are funny, right? I bought these a long time ago. Long, long time, and I was like, oh, I'm so cool. <laughs> I'm like ahead of the trend, I got my straws. Now here's the funny thing though. I realized after buying them, I never really used them because I drank like an adult. Right now, it is funny though, because people are real touchy about their straws. Just one real quick story here. They're touchy about their straws, man. You can't take their straws away from them, you know? I go to this one restaurant, and it was in a food court at a mall. And I told the kid, I was like, look, you know what? I don't want a straw in my drink. And he was like, okay, 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 no straw, no straw. And I made a big deal out of it, right? So then the kid's making the drink, and he was so used to putting straws in it, what do you think he did? He put a straw in it. So what did I do? I was like, dude! He was like, dude! <laughs> right? And so we had a thing, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll take the straws, he's stuck in it. The cashier looked at me, and she was so serious, man. She gave me the death stare. She was like, sir, we have to give straws to customers because women use lipstick. So I looked at her, and seriously, she was so like, err, my straws. She didn't understand that I was a man. It took her a second to be like, oh, that didn't make sense at all, right? So we gotta be careful about the straw thing, but here's one thing I have to say to all of Vietnamese people out there. You all want your straws with your soft drinks and your coffees, but when you go to a coffee shop and you get handed a glass of iced tea without a straw, you don't think anything about it because that's how iced tea has always been. Mm. You can drink iced tea without a straw, so why not drink a cup without a straw? Just a thought for you. Also in my zero waste toolkit, big one for me. Ha ha, what is this? It's a bag. Guys, I've been doing this for about three, four years now. It's great, I almost never take a plastic bag home. And it's so small. You can fit this in your motorbike. Another thing I like to do, I take home a lot of food, okay? Remember I was telling you guys, Vietnam's at the sun, we do a lot of trash pickups. In the top three things that we pick up, food boxes, okay? So, you're gonna go home, and you're gonna get a zero waste toolkit together. <laughs> okay, I'm about done with my time, but I'll leave you guys with one last thought. Okay, my super ego thing, my thing, environment, litter, plastic, reducing that, that's my super ego thing. What's your super ego thing? It's up to you. What are you gonna be, are you gonna be a dancer? You're gonna be a fashion mogul? You're gonna be a, a feminist advocate? You're gonna be a master chef? What are you gonna be? Are you gonna be like Mother Teresa, helping the poor? You're gonna be like uh, Thomas Edison, you're gonna bring us light? You're gonna be like Doc, Dr. Martin Luther King and talk about equality? Or are you gonna just be the cool guy that goes to the orphanage on the weekend to hang out with an orphan and be a good big brother? or the nursing home and hang out with a sweet old lady who would love to have your company. Or maybe you're just gonna be a really good sister or a good brother, good son. Or maybe you'll be like Iron Man and save the universe. What is your super ego? I'll leave you with that. Thank you.